the mysterious traveler. Another journey into the realm of the strange and terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves. Where are we going? You'll find out when we get there. I hope it's not making you nervous being alone with me in the dark. Darkness stirs strange terrors in some minds. For the things that happen at night are sometimes most upsetting. Things such as cats that vanish or die, as in the tale of The House of Death. this way, Louise. We're so isolated from everyone. Yes, Martha. It was much nicer when we lived in our own house in the village. Even if Roger and Hester are our nephew and niece, we should never have let them persuade us to move out here with them. Mm. Oh, doesn't that wind ever stop blowing? Martha, Roger and Hester are coming. I I, I just saw the car turn into the drive. I oh, hope they've brought a maid. Well, what's the matter with Toby and Queenie? Oh, mother's little darling's hungry. Mm. Even Toby and Queenie don't like living here. Yes, they, they do seem unhappy. But well, Toby hasn't been eating well at all. Oh, Louise, it's very foolish out living here with Roger and Hester. I think we should move back to our house in the village where we can really be happy. Oh, Martha, could we? Oh, see no reason why we can't. So much nonsense about our being invalids and too old to live alone. Hello, Aunt Martha. Aunt Louise. Oh, Roger. Were you able to get a maid for it? Oh, I'm sorry about that, Aunt Louise. I tried, but it's just impossible to get a maid these days. But Roger, you know we need someone to push Louise around in her wheelchair. Too much for me. Well, I'm sure Hester will do anything you ask. How are you, Aunt Louise? Aunt Martha. I brought you some good hot tea and some biscuits. Thank you, dear. Uh, Roger... Louise and I have been talking things over. Now, it is very kind of Hester and you to invite us to live with you, but we were much happier living in the village and would like to go back to our house. What? But, Aunt Martha, it's much better for you here. Well, of course. You're homesick, that's all. Why, certainly in time you'll come to love this place as we do. Now, we don't want to hear another word about your leaving us. We couldn't be happy thinking of the two of you living alone in that house in the village. Come along, Roger. Let them drink their tea. Yes, Hester. Well, see you both later. They're really so good to us, Martha. But I, I do wish they'd let us return to our own house. Mm. He's very strange. Mm? You cried it, Jeff Louise? No. Well, yes, you're right. It, it, it does taste funny. Probably the water they use. Nothing out here seems as good as it was home. You better not drink any more of it. No, oh, do you remember the little teas we used to give when we lived in the village? Mary Thompson came over every afternoon. It was so nice. Mm, there's no reason why we can't move back to our house and have those teas again. But you heard what Roger and Hester said. Our health isn't so good, and we need someone to look after us. Well, what of it? With all that money Father left us, we can afford a dozen servants. Yes, Louise, I think we'd better plan to return home. Mail car in sight, Louise? Mm, Martha, not yet. You know, I've been thinking quite a bit these past 24 hours about returning home, and I think we'll leave here in a few days. Oh, Martha, that would be wonderful. Oh, look, here, here comes George Gibson now with the mail. Oh, and that time, too. Yes. Uh, uh, how would that to be and beautiful Queenie like to go back to their own little home? Oh, Martha, they understand perfectly what you're saying. Look how happy they are. <laughs> Good they do. Hello, Aunt Martha. Oh. Aunt Louise. George Gibson just delivered the Sentinel. Oh, Here thank, you are. Thank you, Roger. We've been waiting all day for you. Oh, that's all right, Aunt Louise. Hester will soon bring you your supper. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, Martha, let's look at the obituary notices first. That's just what I was turning to, to be. Ah, uh, uh, here we are. Did anybody we know die? Now, let me see. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. You remember Amos Wilson, don't you? Yes. He died two days ago. Poor Amos. He was about your age, wasn't he, Martha? Certainly not. He was a good deal older. <gasps> Martha, look at this. Hmm? Why, it says Mary Thompson is entering the home for the infirm. The poor house? Oh, no, it can't be. Oh, the dreadful place. I'd sooner be dead than in that home. Poor Mary. Oh, I shudder every time I think of that horrible place. The poor house. Martha, after we move back to the village, can't we have Mary come to live with us? Yes, of course. Going to the poor house would be the death of her. Oh. Huh? Louise, what are you staring at in this paper? No. No, it can't be. What can't be? Read what it says in the real estate column. Hmm? The old Abbott mansion, owned by the Mrs. Martha and Louise Abbott, has been put up for sale by their nephew, Roger Abbott. What? We never told Roger to sell our house. I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, Martha, it's been in the family for almost a century. How could Roger do such a thing? I'll soon find out. Roger! Roger! Now, Martha, you, you mustn't get excited. But why should he want to sell our house? Are you calling me up, Martha? Yes, Roger. What's this in the Sentinel about a house being for sale? Oh, is it in the Sentinel? Oh, I'm sorry. It is a mistake, isn't it, Roger? No, Aunt Louise. You see, as co-trustee of Grandfather's estate, I thought it would be a good idea to sell the house. Prices are high these days, and the house is rather old. But you have no right to put the house up for sale without telling me. I won't hear of the house being sold. Oh, you mustn't get excited, Aunt Martha. If you don't want the house sold, I'll remove it from the market. Oh, please do. We couldn't live in the house if it was sold, could we? All right, please? all right. I'll take care of everything. Everything's going to be all right now. Oh. I don't like it, Louise. I don't like it at all. Why did he try to sell it without telling us? It, it does seem strange. Louise, we must get in touch with Judge Smith. Yes. He's the administrator of Father's estate, and he'll take care of everything for us in the way we want it. It isn't that I don't trust Roger, but you must recall the scrapes he was in when he attended college. Conley, the matter of that bad check Roger gave. It hadn't been for his dear Shh. father, he but someone's coming, Martha. I have your supper for you. Now, please eat them before they get cold. Yes, Esther. There you are. Just call me if there's anything else you want. Yes, does Mother's beautiful queenie want something to eat? I don't see Toby any place around. Well, he's probably in the kitchen. Now, say pretty please, queenie, and Mother give you this nice piece of meat. <laughs> That's Mother's darling. Here you are. Oh, isn't she lovely, Louise? Oh, yes. Queenie has such wonderful manners. Uh, we'd better eat our soup before it gets cold, Martha. Yes. As I was saying, Louise, I don't care for Roger's attitude at all. Ask me, he's been behaving very strangely. Yes, Martha. Martha. Hmm? Martha, that, that piece of meat you gave Queenie doesn't seem to have agreed with her. She looks ill. Oh. Yes, you're right. Oh, Queenie, what's the matter with Mother's little darling? Oh, Martha, she's in agony. Yes, what can be done? Oh, Roger, Roger, come quickly. Oh, poor Queen. Roger, oh, suffering so hard. Oh, Roger, do something. We must help poor Queenie. Oh, Roger, look. I'm afraid it's too late, Aunt Martha. She's dead. Dead? But oh, it can't be. Oh, she was all right just a few minutes ago. Things like this will happen, Aunt Martha. She was old. She probably had a chance. Roger, you better take Queenie out of here. All right, dear. Poor Queenie. We've had her ever since she was a little kitten. Twelve years now. There, there, Aunt Louise. You mustn't cry. You still have Toby. Now, why don't you eat your supper? You'll feel much better if you do. Yes, How can you speak of food at a time like this? With poor Queenie's body not even cold. I'm sorry, Aunt Martha. If you want me, just call. Oh, Martha, it won't be the same without Queenie. I simply can't understand it. One minute Queenie was perfectly well. Then after you gave her the meat, she became ill. Yes, she was perfectly well until she ate the meat. Mm. Louise, the meat, that's it. Don't understand, Martha. The meat, it was poisoned. Poisoned? Louise, that poisoned meat was meant for us. Martha. You don't mean that Roger and Hester... 
Oh, no. Yes, no. Louise, get after our money. Oh, what are we going to do? We, we, we can't get at the phone. We've got to get in touch with Judge Smith. Oh. Our lives depend upon it. The two old ladies stared at each other, terror in their eyes. The minutes dragged into hours, and each hour was a nightmare as they waited for the time to come when they could make the one contact between themselves and the outside world. Do you see George Gibson's car yet, Martha? No, Louise, but he should be in sight any minute now. Oh, what if Mr. Roger come home before he gets here? Then we won't be able to talk to him about our message to Judge Smith. Now, Louise, you know Roger isn't due home from work for another hour. Yes, yes, but what about Hester? She's over at the Miller's farm, and she's liable to return any minute, Louise. I see George Gibson's car. Oh, he's just turning oh, into hurry, the drive. Hurry, Martha, hurry, Martha, right, hurry. Please. Hurry, The window. Oh, Martha, Martha, fall to him quick before he gets away. George? George Gibson? Hello? Who's calling? Uh, look over this way, George. It's Martha Abbott. I want to see you. Oh, it's you, Martha. Well, howdy. I want to know He's coming, Louise. Do you hear? Yes. Now we'll be able to get in touch with Judge Smith. But after George Gibson left the Abbott sisters, he met Hester a half mile up the road. The two conversed for a minute. Then George Gibson continued on his way. Hester stared after him as he drove away, her face tense and white. Then, as if suddenly understanding the implication of his words, she turned and ran towards her home, her heart pounding with fear. Roger! Roger, I just met George Gibson, and he told me that when he delivered the mail here, Aunt Martha and Aunt Louise called him into the house. Call him into the house? Yes. They asked him to get Judge Smith for him at once. I told you it wasn't safe to leave them alone, even with the phone locked in our room. All our plans may have been for nothing. Oh, Roger, do you think they suspect? I don't know. I do know it was a mistake letting them talk to George Gibson. After all our careful work, we can't let everything be spoiled now. Oh, Martha, these past 24 hours have been endless. Where can George be? Probably delayed somewhere. Oh, Martha, Martha, there. George is coming. He just turned into the drive. I told you he wouldn't fail us. Oh, but Roger and Hester are in the house now. What if they don't let George see us? Nonsense. When George has a message to deliver, he delivers it. I've just, just gone out to get the mail, but... Louise. What is it, Martha? What's wrong? That isn't George Gibson driving the mail car. What? The man driving is only a youngster. Now oh, he's leaving. Martha, what does it mean? I don't know. I don't understand. Perhaps George is ill and he couldn't come today. Hello, I'm Martha Louise. This magazine just came in the mail. Thought you might like to see it. Thank you, Roger. Why didn't George Gibson deliver the mail? Oh, so you noticed there was a new driver today? Yes. I'm sorry to tell you this, but poor George Gibson was killed last night. Killed? Oh, no. He had an accident as he was returning to the village. An accident? Yes. I don't want to speak any more about it. It'll just upset you. Hester will bring you your supper soon. Oh, poor George. That means Judge Smith never got our message. Oh, Martha. We don't you see it wasn't an accident. But Roger said it was. George it... was deliberately killed to keep him from going to Judge Smith. <gasps> Martha, you don't mean that Roger and Mr. Hester... We they won't stop at anything to get our money. Oh, Martha, I'm so frightened. Oh, we must have courage or we're lost. Oh, but if we can't get word to the outside and, and they're poisoning our food. Oh, we haven't eaten a thing since poor Queenie died. We can't go on throwing food away or we'll starve. There's only one thing to do, Louise, if we're not to starve. Toby, must sample our food before we eat it. You mean to see if it's poisoned? Yes. Oh, oh I know it's dreadful risking poor Toby's life like that. But it's the only thing to do. And meanwhile, we must get in touch with Judge Smith. We must. <laughs> Oh, Toby, a nice piece of meat for mother's little darling. Aunt Martha? 
Why are you feeding Toby? He gets plenty to eat in the kitchen. Of course. I've always fed Toby for my own plate. He expects it. But Aunt Martha, if you feed that meat to the cat, there won't be enough for you. Yes. If you're to get well, you need all that food. Now, I don't want you feeding Toby any more of it. Here, Toby. Come along, boy. Come on out to the kitchen while Aunt Martha and Louise eat their supper. What, Martha? Louise, I've brought you your lunch. Doesn't it look good? Yes, Hester, it's very nice. Lunch, eh? Here, Toby. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Hester, have you seen Toby? No, Aunt Martha, I haven't. Oh, but where could he be? Toby's always on time for meals. Uh, he's probably someplace around the house. Oh. Now eat your lunch before it gets cold. Oh, Martha, where can he be? Toby will be along in a few minutes. And we won't touch a bit of this food until he's tried it first. Oh, I do wish he were here. I'm so hungry. Please, don't touch a thing on that tray. It isn't safe. Oh, here, Toby. Here, kitty, 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 yes. kitty, 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 I have your supper here for you, too. What? Aunt Martha. Neither of you ate your lunch. What's wrong? We... We weren't hungry, Hester. Have you found Toby yet? No. I've looked everywhere for him, but he seems to have disappeared. Oh, no. Now, you mustn't worry. I'm sure he'll turn up. Yes. Oh. Aunt Martha, you and Louise can't afford to miss meals in your state of health. Why, certainly not. Now, we want you to eat everything that Hester has brought you. Yes, you'll make us very unhappy if you don't. Now, eat it while it's hot. Come along, Roger. I'll get you your supper. All right, dear. Did you hear what she said about Toby Louise? Yes, he vanished. Nonsense. They've killed him. You saw how angry they were last night when we fed Toby from our plates. They've killed him so he won't spoil their plans. Oh, Martha, what are we going to do? I'm so hungry. We've got to get word to Judge Smith before it's too late. But how? Tomorrow, I'm going to go out to the road and try to get to the village. But, Martha, it's, it's two miles to the village, and you know you can't walk more than a few yards. You, you're not strong enough. Louise, with either starvation or poisoning staring us in the face, we haven't any choice. I must try to reach the village. <laughs> The next morning, after Roger had left for the village and Hester had gone to the Miller farm, Martha dressed as quickly as her shaking hands would permit. Louise watched nervously as her sister quietly opened the door and started on her long, painful way to the village. Hello, Aunt Louise. Oh, why, where's Aunt Martha? Aunt Martha? Um, she's someplace around the house. But I've just been through the house. Why, her closet is open. And her hat and coat are missing. Aunt Louise, did Martha leave this house? Why, uh, oh, why, yes, she, uh, she said she wanted to go for a walk. Go for a walk? With her age and in weather like this? Why, it'll be the death of her. Did she start out toward the village? Answer me. Hey, yes, Hester. I'll phone Roger at his office. She must be stopped. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, as Roger drove along the road leading to his home, he saw a small figure in the distance. It was Aunt Martha. There was a weary, painful look on her face as she hobbled towards the village. In spite of her determined resistance, he put her in his car and drove rapidly on home. One thought was uppermost in his mind. He must make sure that this could never be repeated. Oh, Martha, I'm so hungry. Yes, Louise, I know. So am I. We've gone three days now without eating. We left them our money and our wills. Why must they kill us? They're nothing but common murderers. Oh, if there was only some way to get word to the village. Louise, I've got an idea. What is it, Martha? If we were to set fire to the house, they'd see it in the village. Yes, and then, then the fire company would come out. Then we'd be able to tell them we'd be saved. Oh, oh, but Martha, Hester and Roger would put out the fire before it could get big enough. 
Louise, I know a way we can prevent them from putting out the fire. You do? Yes, and we can save ourselves, Louise. We can save ourselves. <laughs> But, Martha, why are you looking down the cellar? You should be in your room. Yes, it's drafty out here in the hall. Now, come on, close the cellar door and go back to your room. But I heard Toby crying. He's down in the cellar, and I won't go to my room until I get but here. But Aunt Martha, Roger, he... just to put Aunt Martha's mind at ease, why don't you go down to the cellar and see if Toby is there? Oh, all right. If you ask me, it's just a waste of time. Oh, please help him look for Toby, Hester. you will find him so much quicker if you both look for him. Oh, very well. But you go back to your room so you won't catch cold. Roger, do you see him? He doesn't seem to be any place here in the cellar. Oh, now we'll see just how smart you are trying to poison us. There, you won't stop us from escaping now. Oh, I must get Louise. Louise! Louise. Yes, Martha. Oh, Louise, it worked. Martha, you mean you were able to lock them in the cellar? Yes, and with the door locked, they can't get out. Oh. And Martha, unlock this door. Let us go. Oh, they found out they're locked in. Don't you worry about it, Louise. I'll take care of everything. Oh, Martha. And Martha. Martha, what are you doing with that kerosene man? I'm pouring the kerosene around the room so that it'll burn in Oh, yeah. Are you ready to leave, Louise? Yes, Martha. Then I'll start the match and start the fire. Oh, oh, how quickly it's starting to spread. Yes, we better leave. I'll push your wheelchair, Louise, and you try to help by rolling the wheels. Yes, Louise. There. Yes, we're coming along nicely. Oh, Martha, I hate the baby. Louise, you mustn't waste any pity on them. Even if they are our niece and nephew, they're nothing but common murderers. Yes, I suppose you're right. Now I'll just open the front door and we'll be free. Oh, the wheels a bit, Louise. Yes, I am. Just a few feet more and we'll be safe. There, there. Far enough away from the house to be perfectly safe. Oh, my. The whole house is on fire now. Yes. Lovely fire, isn't it? I don't feel cold at all. Oh, do you think they can see it in the village by now, Martha? I'm sure they do. I remember, Louise, when the fire company gets here, we don't know what happened to Roger and Hester. We just managed to get out ourselves. Yes, Martha. If we told them what we were forced to do to escape, we'd have to reveal that our own niece and nephew were poisonous and murderous. We don't want to disgrace the family name, Louise. Oh, no, Martha. Of course not. Oh, look, look, Martha, look. The roof is beginning to go. A few minutes later, the fire company arrived to find Martha and Louise in the garden, staring at the roaring fire which had been their home. It was too late to save the other occupants of the house, so the men were forced to stand by helplessly and watch it burn. Good morning, Judge Smith. Good morning, Miss Martha, Miss Louise. I trust you're well after that terrible ordeal last night. We're much better, thank you, Judge. Well, now that your niece and nephew are gone, we must plan for your future. Oh, you don't have to bother, Judge. All we want to do is move back to our old house, hire a few servants, and live as we used to. Oh, and I was wondering if you could arrange to have Mary Thompson come live with us. I won't hear of her going to that dreadful home for the infirm. Oh, no, it would be the death of her. Ladies, I'd hoped I'd never have to reveal the truth to you, but now it appears I must. I don't understand, Judge. Last month, the bonds in the trust fund your father left you became utterly worthless. What? Your nephew and niece were afraid the shock of learning you were penniless would kill you. So it was decided to keep the news from you. That's why the three of us persuaded you to move in with them. Your house here in the village had to be sold to meet debts of the estate. But that can't be. Father left us so much. So worthless now. Perhaps I should have told you this a month ago. But your niece and nephew wouldn't hear of it. It's 
spite of the fact that they had only Roger's salary to live on, they were determined to prevent you from ever learning of your misfortune. But the, the deaths of poor Courtney and Toby, of, of, of George Gibson. George Gibson? Yes. I'm afraid I don't understand. Surely you heard he was killed a few days ago when a tire on his car blew out and it overturned. You mean he wasn't murdered? Certainly not. Oh. Are you feeling well? Has my news been too much for you? No, no. Well, now that your niece and nephew are gone and there's no one to support you, I'm afraid there's only one thing left. One thing left? What's that? I'm sorry to say... The home for the infirm, the poor house. This is the mysterious traveler again. Have you enjoyed our little trip? Too bad about the Abbott sisters. Such nice old ladies. But then, how were they to know that poor Queenie died of cramps, not poison? After all, you can't be too careful, can you? Would you care for a sandwich? They're very delicious. I make them myself. Oh, you're getting off at the next stop. I'm sorry. Perhaps you'll join me again soon. I take this same train every week. You've just heard Chapter 9 of The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and unusual brought to you each week by Station WOR. In tonight's program, The House of Death, Irene Hubbard played Martha Abbott and Elizabeth Morgan played Louise Abbott. The Mysterious Traveler, written by Robert Arthur and David Cogan, is directed by Jock McGregor. Original music was played by Doc Whipple. Listen next week to a tale titled The Man Who Knew Too Much. Another tale of The Mysterious Traveler. The Mysterious Traveler is presented by WOR Mutual every Sunday at 7 over most of these stations. This is Mutual. <laughs>